Oh, hello. Thought I'd try on my Star Wars diorama hat. That's pretty good. Yeah, it works as a hat, also just works as the diorama. <laughs> Uh, I figured we could just start with something simple like the doors. What I did when I made these is I made these little templates and I made all my door sizes off these two templates on the pieces that I made so that I could just make a couple of door, a couple of door sizes, excuse me, and not have to custom make every single size door when I was done. So like this door, it fits right there. I'm gonna actually have to trim that down just a hair. This door fits right in there. It also fits right in there. And so we can use these as templates to make uh, our doors. And of course, there's a trillion ways you could do this. You could do this by hand. And there's a trillion different types of materials. You could do it by hand. You could 3D print it. You could mold and cast it. You could do all those things. We're going to make these by hand um, just to show you how that's done and how I would approach that. I am going to start with PVC sheet and styrene. So I have this... Uh, box of scraps in a cave no this box of scraps that i saved of cutoffs from other things that i made styrene and poster board and um, pvc sheet that i saved that i feel like i can use to make small details later uh even i even mean bits of bits of aluminum and pvc pipe in here and i'm gonna pull from just this to make um the doors and some of the details so i save a lot of my scraps if they're you know large enough where they're like long thin straight pieces i'll save them to add to make add details to things later okay let's do start with an easy one let's do a square door first let me just make sure that this is nice and even and straight before i get in on this so looks like my door is a little out of whack let me grab a pencil I just drank some coffee so I could wake up. So if I'm talking a little fast, sorry. <laughs> so it's a little, I have my, my piece of foam is curving in a little bit right here. And the resin grout that I pushed in is kind of shrinking the hole here a little bit at the top. But instead of cutting this out and re-grouting it, I'm just going to shrink the door a little bit. Um, and then with weathering, I'll, I'll hide the edge. It's not going to be perfectly straight. I don't think it'll matter when this is sitting down and lit. So just going to mark... Yeah, I'm just going to kind of cut this off like that. I'm going to label this the top, so don't forget which end is which end. Careful, chill, Rin, if you're cutting do it with the supervision of adults. All right. Put this over here to the center. So, theoretically, that should fit. Oh, maybe a little more. I'm just going to trace it onto some PVC sheet. This is one eighth inch thick PVC sheet. I have tons of this stuff. I buy it from a local plastic supplier because it's way cheaper that way. Instead of buying it in individual sheets, I buy it in giant sheets and cut them down because I use a lot of it. I'm going to freehand this watch. Oh, straight line. go I've got a little bit of a bird edge here I'm just gonna shave that off you could also do that with sandpaper if you're afraid of slicing your thumb open hey thanks for the likes guys I appreciate that the tiny art experiment appreciates your thumbs up I speak for the world <laughs> I'm the Lorax I speak for the trees so see how this, I have this, this is actually from a, another Star Wars build, I saved this. This is a cutoff piece that was the wrong size, but I was like, this kind of looks like a mechanical detail. So I just saved it and threw it in my scrap bin, figured I'd use it later. Maybe I could use it on this door. Let's see. I'll go like this. All right. I'm just kind of freehanding it, and I'll just make sure that kind of lines line up geometrically the way that I want so yep it's already starting to look like a Star Wars door there's that all right so I've got some weird angles going on here so I'm gonna cut off some of this I'm gonna do like I'm just gonna make it up do that see how that looks 
This needs to be a little straighter. I'm just going to note that with a pencil for myself, and I'm just going to trim it straighter. Nope. Yep. There we go. Almost there. Cut a little burr off there. And there we go. It's a good start. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to spread this on the back side of the smaller piece. And this is pretty thick liquid, so I'm going to spread it mostly in the middle portions of the piece instead of all the way to the edge because it's so thick because it's going to push out when I press down. And I don't want it to squeeze out if I can prevent it from doing that. <clears throat> like under the piece and then I have super glue globs I have to try to clean up which is not fun all right push outward from the center that should pretty much see it's coming out under here a little bit don't do it okay there we go all righty just gonna do this a couple times And the cool thing about working in with super glue, I love super glue, and I have open holes in buildings I can just glue, I can literally just spray paint it, put some wash over it and glue it in. But um, if you really want to make something, make whatever you want. We got people that made, um, that made speeders, that made action figures, that made aliens, that made small buildings, that made Tuscan Raider huts, that made doors and piping and mechanical pieces so just you got to make it in like a month and ship it to me because i really uh i can't be waiting for people's pieces to try to integrate so so got this little piece i want to glue that on Let's plop some glue right there use the piece to scrape it make sure my gaps are even plop it in place does it look like a Star Wars Star Wars door to you guys? What do you think? And I could trim a few pieces here. Do 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 do. And we could just do this. Is also the stuff also works for like sci-fi any sci-fi diorama it doesn't have to be Star Wars. You know what I mean? There we go. Oops. There we go piece wasn't perfectly rectangular. Let me make this a little bit more parallel. Or not parallel, but rectangular. Okay. Another piece right here. Doot, doot, doot. And I'm going to add some detail lines. Just for the fun of it. See that? I just scored some lines into it. Okay, I think I'll, I need something right here. Let me, I have a bunch of little, let me pull the camera up here so you guys can see. I uh, have a bunch of little pieces of random junk that I save um, and I put in here. Let me see if I can find something interesting to attach to the door or an interesting shape. It's gonna pretty much all be in the bottom in a sec. There we go. Stuff like this. That's too big. Or this. Pull some things out here. Stuff that we might use later. A little pen cap. Let's see what else we got. cord cleat for a nail to nail a cord to a wall. So there's just some pieces I just pulled out of my scraps. I have a whole bin and stuff like this too that I keep separate. But let's just see. That looks that might look a little too weird. Yeah. Nope. This might be too big. That's probably too big to put on a door. What about this? This might be the perfect piece. 
So there we go. So this is, uh, so you see what this is? If you put a nail through this, you can put this over a cord and bam, 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 and hammer the cord to the wall. I just, this, I had this sitting in my pocket one day after work and I was like, hey, that's a nice little greebly detail piece. So I threw it in my little bin of scraps. And let me leave it down here. Sorry, I'm a little far away from it, guys. Put it right there. There we go. Whoops. Don't slide around too much. All right. There we go. A little detail on the door. Maybe if I cut a little round piece of this tube off. Bro, I hear ya. It's a it's an addiction. And that's what in the steampunk world they refer to it as obtainium. All the little things that you save to um, make stuff out of, call it obtainium. Right? Without obtainium, you can't make your little fantastical, crazy nerd items. You need obtainium. So, you know, I did that for a long time. I went to garage sales, yard sales, estate sales, craft, thrift stores, craft stores, and got a lot of obtainium. And I have tons of it now. <sighs> Way too much. I literally actually have not been to a garage sale in like five years because of it. Because I would go to garage sales and buy like whole tables of stuff that I thought was interesting because I could reuse it or cut it down or whatever. I bought a, I have an entire box of vintage microchips, um, resistors, transistors, and capacitors from like the, and I'm talking vintage, like, like seventies and eighties stuff, like OG stuff. Um, that is, they're all, and they're all new too. They're new old stock. Exactly. Star Marvel. Cause we obtained it. Um, and it's all new old stock, which I have, I actually have some personal art projects that I want to make some fine art out of that I'm saving that stuff for. Just cutting off some of the flash that I created or burrs, I guess. Okay. I'm going to call that a door and we'll paint these at the end. Um, these go pretty quick, so I don't think it'll be a big deal. We should be able to paint them before the end of the stream. This way or this way? I don't remember which way I measured this template. I guess it doesn't matter. I might've measured it on that other door. That's okay. And just gonna trace on this one. And I'm gonna freehand it because I'm a wacko. I've gotten pretty good at following lines short distances. As long as your knife is sharp and you're not pointing it near you, it actually goes pretty well. I don't use X-Actos a lot on PVC sheet either because it's pretty dense and the exactos tend to not cut as fast through it. Um, these bigger knives seem to do better, bigger blades and these box cutters. I think I have a link below to get this knife if you want it. Um, and uh, I find that when I try to force them through, it slips and I almost cut myself. So I find the exactos are good for fine details, really fine work, but I actually, I use this, bo this box cutter the most out of any cutting utensil I have in my entire arsenal this one and then i have a slightly smaller one i use sometimes like half size and i have a really big one i use for cutting large when i have to cut like a large piece of foam or a large cut into foam but this i use for probably 90 percent of my cutting like of any kind whether it's fabric cardboard pvc styrene foam whatever Just gonna break that off and just shave this because it's easier. This part's not gonna be seen, so I'm not gonna freak out about it. Okay. Just see what I need to trim off. A uh, little bit here, a little bit there. I'm just gonna cut those off and probably just sand it over. Yep. Yes, no. Yep, there we go. And what I'll probably do is I'll build a border around this. Okay. I'm just gonna spray paint it right here. I'm gonna use dark walnut as my base coat. Not black. Yeah. We're gonna do it. Because I have a fan on me, I'm not worried about it.
Good enough for me. Boom. All right. So I'm going to let this cure just off screen a little bit. I'm going to put it kind of near the fan over here and then we'll we'll do some uh, painting, weathering, washes and stuff. And I think we can probably do that because this satin stuff, as long as it gets to like half cure, once you start putting washes over, it actually makes it cure even faster. So I learned that on accident, trying to paint something before it was dry. So a little tip there. And we're going to do this. Plop some silver there, plop some silver there. And I'm going to get this brush and I'm going to spread the silver around. I'm not going to worry about it drying, but I've got a very wet brush that's on purpose. It helps the paint flow into all these little cracks and crevices. I want that for this. Using acrylics. If we did oils or something, I might do this differently. But um, this is how I've learned to work with acrylics. So just a cautionary note. It doesn't necessarily work for every single kind of paint and every single kind of brush. But what we're doing with what we're doing here should be just fine. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to get my brush wet again. I'm going to spread this silver around. Here. And if this does what I want it to do, it should look pretty cool. I'm going to just drag straight down. There we go. And up as well. And I'm doing this on purpose. Whoops. Not that one anymore. And I'm going to basically just kind of wipe back and forth. If I can keep the paper towel in my hand. And as I do this, it'll actually make the paint dry and it'll smear it in vertical lines to look like uh, weathering on the door. I'm also going to, a little bit too much in those crevices there. That's okay. I'm going to squish it out. And this is a minimal thing, but it actually, as you layer things up, it'll just be one of those, one of those little layers that will add to the, oh, how'd you do that? Well, this is how I did that. And get some water, get the nutmeg, put the nutmeg on it. Same thing. Just gonna kind of swipe down until I get it how I want it. You could also, you don't have to swipe either. You could dab it. You could just do like this if you wanted to. That's another way. You could stipple it with a brush. You could spray with denatured alcohol. You could do whatever. I'm just, this is just one way. Again, I always try to remind people too. This is, I'm not telling you this is the way. This is just a way. So if you've seen another way you like better, you don't have to do this. Don't think I'm telling you this is the best way. It's just a way. It's like, okay, relax. So now I'm going to use straight up orange paint. Oops, that's a lot. And I'm going to paint and then I'm going to swipe down with the paint and put it in the low spots. Just going to brush it right on as it is. The low spots in the crevices. Going back to the swipey method. Might even spread some more water on this because that's drying a little quicker than I wanted it to, but that's okay. There we go. Just to get some of that off, knock it down a little bit. There we go. A little too thick in a couple areas for me. Yeah. Okay. I'm almost done here anyways. I'm just going to do this and glue the doors on. I think we're good. Okay. So I'm just going to very lightly do some edges of stuff. And whoops, too much. <laughs> I'm already messing up my dry brushing.
Come on, I'm not coming out very fast. That's all right. Okay. Oops. The front there. Oops. Okay. Press that into place. Make sure that that's nice and flat. Yeah. There it is. Door number one. We did it, guys. We made a pretty looking Tatooine door. All right. And door number two. Make sure I'm happy with this before I completely glue it in place. That looks pretty cool.